Hello, and today we will be looking at the chronology of an idealised property cycle. The idea of a property cycle, if you like, is just like a model of demand and supply. Essentially, the idea is to draw some kind of long-term trend reflecting recurrent events that happen in the property market. Now, the consensus is that there are certain things that we accept or expect or assume when there's a recession or a boom to happen in the industry. But the magnitude of these factors, for example, what happens to demand at certain times, and the fluctuations of the cycle, um, they are something that we can't predict and there isn't necessarily a trend because, you know, historical data shows that all of these things are, you know, they're, they're not um, consistent, they're ever-changing. So what the idea behind today's video is to look at the kind of consensus ideas. So what do economists um, ex uh, expect or assume happens when the economy is expanding, for instance? In the corner, you will also find attached just a very simple picture I got off Google of um, uh, uh, the real estate values, um, so capital values and what's happening um, in the property industry as we go through the business cycle. So let's begin with an expansion. So at this point, we're looking at an upturn in the business cycle. And what's usually happening here is that interest rates are usually low. There's a lot of capital available, which is important for the real estate industry because obviously for developments as well as for consumption, um, we need capital because, you know, it's not something somebody can just afford a property. Um, so what we're having is there's more economic activity. And as a result, the consumer demand is also going up. What we also see is that there's a lower um, expectation of risk and a high expectation of return, which results in investor optimism, which is also pushing up um, demand. And this investor optimism largely arises um, from the idea that there's a lot of general demand from consumers, which pushes up the price as to build a property or make a development, it takes time. So it's basically where in simple economic terms, demand is greater than supply. So rents go up, vacancy rates fall, and um, you know, basically investors, they become more opt uh, optimistic and they want to invest in property. Um, capital values do, you know, rise, uh, eventually, um, in, in, you know, at this point, but there is a delay because valuations are based on historical data and so they take time to adjust to new information. So at this point, we already said the investors are quite optimistic and rents are going up. Um, and so the prospect of uh, the profitability and prospect of making new development improves. And so new development break, um, starts and capital values, land values do uh, start to rise eventually. Obviously, this takes time because there are time lags in the property industry because of the sheer nature of property. Um, and the boom continues to go. And this is a kind of a bubble. You can see a bubble starting here. And then what happens is we get loads of speculative developments because investors are thinking this is a great asset because property starts to outperform bonds, equities and other such items. Um, but there is a time lag in this increased development in the supply reaching demand so rents will still be high. But we eventually reach a peak point where we end up going into something called the oversupply. Because what's happening is expanding, uh, the economy is expanding so greatly that we see that Interest rates start to go up because there's so much demand for uh, money uh, in response to the boom and the business cycle starts to turn downwards. And by that, I don't mean it straight away goes into recession. I just mean it slows down. So um, demand and uh, absorption of um, new space also start to fall. So, you know, vacancy rates start to slow down. Um, supply at this point is slowly, slowly starting to reach um, the market because years have passed, developments have started to build up and an increase in supply pushes prices down even more and this is at a point when demand is falling because the economy is contracting. As a result, vacancy rates go up and rental prices go down. Um, so then, yeah, and this is also spurred by then poorer growth prosper, uh, prospects in the economy. There's less people who are getting employed, so there's less demand for it. Again, for capital values to dramatically fall, they do fall. Um, it takes time because of valuations and the historical nature. 
so they're slow to respond so at this point everything is kind of going downhill and what we're just seeing here is at this point supply is greater um, than demand that's what's happening in share economic terms then when we look at where the economy um, reaches a low or a slump or a recession what happens here is that demand and development is at its rock bottom and um, vacancy rates are above the equilibrium rents are um, you know very very low um, and the cycle will start again because in order to kickstart the economy you know interest rates will start to um, go down as there's less demand for it and then we have the cycle all over again now what's happening though in the adjustment period between um, the the low point and the oversupply point is something also called an adjustment and it's in the diagram where it says recession that section here what's happening here is that demand is falling uh, and supply is increasing and vacancy rates are going up and rents are going down this is a simple thing we've been talking about um, an oversupply bit also but at this point it starts to exacerbate the the downfall in the market and this is because at this point developers are unable to generate the income um, needed to cover the interest payments and as I already this is why I talked about the low point the slump bit before I talked about the adjustment is because as I mentioned the interest rates um, they will start to fall um, but at that point they're still pretty high and developers cannot really get enough generate enough income to cover it um, and so they this results in bankruptcy and poor returns and there's disinvestment from the industry people move their money to bonds and other such assets and it's basically a negative multiplier effect until eventually what will happen is interest rates will go down and we'll go back into the recovery phase then the expansion phase and then we'll reach a boom once again thank you for watching